Alright guys, well it is a gloomy, depressing, rainy day here in the end times here in the Point Lonesome Swamp where we have stumbled into this, uh, what is it, this Friday morning, February 19th, 2021. Oh yeah, I gotta do my uh, Manga Bay Roundup. You can find that over at Collapse Chronicles, but since I am over here on this channel, where we can actually talk uh, with some intelligence about the corona panic. Uh, that's what we're going to talk about today. I want to thank my, uh, my good buddy, uh, Brother Michael from Austin, Texas. We are, let's all uh, wish Mike a speedy recovery from, uh, good Lord, what happened in Austin, Texas this week. He seems to have come through it just fine and uh, is back to sharing intelligent information about the corona panic. And he sent me this article, which I don't think is anywhere in Yahoo News today. I would be shocked from none other than the Wall Street Journal. Uh, the Wall Street Journal, and, and kudos to the Wall Street Journal for having the cojones to publish this article by a doctor named Marty McCary. Let's see if they give us any bio. <clears throat> Dr. McCary is a professor at the Johns Hopkins School of Medicine, wow, <coughs> and the Bloomberg School of Public Health, <clears throat> and the chief medical advisor to Sesame Care and the author of The Price We Pay. <clears throat> All right, so uh, what does a medical professor from Johns Hopkins University have to say about <clears throat> the corona panic here in uh, mid-February? <clears throat> We will have herd immunity by April. COVID cases have dropped 77% in the past six weeks. Experts should level with the public about the good news. But of course, anybody trying to level with the public about any good news about the corona panic uh, will never be published in the mainstream media. Uh, good for you, Wall Street Journal, and you will probably have your video ripped down for spreading disinformation. And my, uh, it'll be it'll be interesting to see if YouTube yanks down my video for spreading disinformation uh, from a professor at Johns Hopkins University. Okay, well, Dr. Mark. <clears throat> What is your, uh, how are you reading the tea leaves? <clears throat> Amid the dire COVID warnings, one crucial fact has been largely ignored. Cases are down 77% over the past six weeks. If a medication slashed cases by 77%, we would call it a miracle pill. Why is the number of cases plummeting much faster than experts predicted? In large part because natural immunity from prior infection is far more common than can be measured by testing. Testing has been capturing only from 10 to 25% of infections depending on when during the pandemic someone got the virus. Applying a time-weighted case capture average of one in six and a half to the cumulative 28 million confirmed cases would mean that about 55 percent of Americans have natural immunity. Now add people getting vaccinated. As of this week, 15% of Americans have received the vaccine and the figure is rising fast. Former Food and Drug Commissioner uh, Scott Gottlieb estimates 250 million doses will have been delivered to some 150 million people by the end of March. 
there is reason to think the country is racing toward an extremely low level of infection as more people have been infected, most of whom have had mild or no symptoms, there are fewer Americans left to be infected. At the current trajectory, I expect COVID will be mostly gone by April, allowing Americans to resume normal life. Uh, Americans resuming normal life uh, by April. Uh, <coughs> we will see what that looks like, Dr. Mark. So then he spends a while, I'm going to put uh, the link on here and you can read this yourself. He gets into this discussion about uh, antibody studies. Antibody studies almost certainly underestimate natural immunity. Then he goes into an explanation of T cells and all of this. Uh, anyway, you can go on and read this article yourself, but I'm going to skip ahead. So we're going to look at some statistics according to a Johns Hopkins University professor. <clears throat> COVID-19 deaths in the U.S. would also suggest much broader immunity than recognized. About 1 in 600 Americans has died of COVID-19, which translates to a population fatality rate of about 0.15%. Other words, according to this man's calculations, 99.85% of Americans have not died of corona panic, and of course, uh, although he doesn't do it here, if, uh, it, it, you know, if you looked at uh, figures for people under 70 years of age, who are not obese or whatever, the, uh, the, the figure would be a hell of a lot higher than 99.85% of Americans out of the total population not dying of corona panic. It would be like 99.985%. Okay, moving on to this other statistic, the COVID-19 infection fatality rate is about 0.23%. Hmm. These numbers indicate that roughly two-thirds of the U.S. population has had the infection. And uh, I am pretty sure that I am among those two-thirds. Uh, since I have not taken one single precaution in my own life since all of this crap, this corona panic blew up. I have completely ignored every single CDC uh, recommendation ever made. I have completely ignored every word out of Anthony Fauci's mouth. Uh, you know, I, I'm sure I am just a, a walking super spreader. There is nobody uh, in this country who has been more reckless uh, in, in ignoring this than Hambone Littletail. Uh, I was healthier in the year 2020 than I have ever been in my entire life. But anyway, uh, getting back uh, to the good doctor here. All right, where were we? <clears throat> In my own conversations with medical experts, I have noticed that they too often dismiss natural immunity, arguing that we don't have data. The data certainly doesn't fit the classic randomized control trial model of the old guard medical establishment. There is no control group. But the observational data 
is compelling. I have argued for months that we could save more American lives if those with prior COVID-19 infection forego vaccines until all vulnerable seniors, meaning sick old people, vulnerable seniors, meaning the sick old people who are most likely to die if they get corona panic, get their first dose. Several studies demonstrate that natural immunity should protect those who had COVID-19 until more vaccines are available. Half my friends in the medical community told me, good idea. The other half say there isn't enough data on natural immunity, despite the fact that reinfections have occurred in less than 1% of people, and when they do occur, the cases are mild. But the consistent and rapid decline in daily cases since January 8th can be explained only by natural immunity. Behavior did not suddenly improve over the holidays. Americans traveled more over Christmas than they had since March. Vaccines also do not explain the steep decline in January. Vaccination rates were low and they take weeks to kick in. My prediction that COVID-19 will be mostly gone by April is based on laboratory data, mathematical data, published literature, and conversations with experts. But it is also based on direct observation of how hard testing has been to get, especially for the poor. If you live in a wealthy community where worried people are vigilant about getting tested, you might think that most infections are captured by testing. But if you have seen the many barriers to testing for low-income Americans, you might think that very few infections have been captured at testing centers. Keeping, keep in mind that most infections are asymptomatic, meaning that the majority of people infected with corona panic will show no symptoms. They will never know they even had it. Keep in mind that most infections are asymptomatic, which still triggers natural immunity. Many experts, along with politicians and journalists, are afraid to talk about herd immunity. The term has political overtones because some suggested the U.S. simply let COVID rip to achieve herd immunity. That was a reckless idea, but herd immunity is the inevitable result of viral spread and vaccination. When the chain of virus transmission has been broken, in multiple places, it's harder for it to spread, and that includes the new strains. Herd immunity has been well documented in the Brazilian city of Manaus, where researchers in the Lancet reported the prevalence of prior COVID-19 infection to be 76% resulting in a significant slowing of the infection. Doctors are watching a new strain that threatens to evade prior immunity, but countries where the new variants have emerged, such as the UK, South Africa, and Brazil, are also seeing significant declines in daily new cases. The risk of these new variants mutating around the prior vaccinated or natural immunity should be a reminder that COVID-19 will persist 
for decades after the pandemic is over. <clears throat> um, some medical experts privately agreed with my prediction that there may be very little COVID-19 by April, but suggested that I not talk publicly about herd immunity. Yes, do not talk about public herd immunity. You will sound like an anti-science, climate change denying, Trump-tard conspiracy wacko. If you mention the words herd immunity, you will be ostracized, you will be uh, marginalized, laughed at, uh, this man's career is probably in jeopardy uh, after publishing this article. Anyway, where was I? Uh, suggested, some medical experts privately agreed with my prediction, but suggested that I do not talk publicly about herd immunity because people might become complacent and fail to take precautions or might decline the vaccine. But scientists should not try to manipulate the public by hiding the truth. As we encourage everyone to get a vaccine, and for the record, and it, I, anybody who wants to get the vaccine, get the vaccine. Hambone Littletail has never said, don't get the vaccine. If you want to get the vaccine, get the vaccine. Uh, this guy says get the vaccine. I say get the vaccine. It is a free country. Get the vaccine. <clears throat> As we encourage everyone to get a vaccine, we also need to reopen the schools and society to limit the damage of closures and prolonged isolation contingency planning for an open economy by April can deliver hope to those in despair and those and to those who have made large personal sacrifices. Amen, uh, Dr. Mark. Uh, and, and good for the uh, Wall Street Journal for uh, <clears throat> actually actually uh, talking a little bit of corona panic truth here. Uh, although, as they say, you probably will not find this in the top 100 headlines uh, on Yahoo News today. But i got to wrap this up because uh, i got to move over to Collapse Chronicles and see what's on the uh, mind of Rhett Butler over at mongabay.com and then we're heading to the big city <clears throat> for some Cuban food. Bye guys. No, we have a whole nother rant to do, little dog. Well, I got some bad news. We have a whole nother rant to do.